Hey guys, me Tammy Lowe, the lazy northern gardener in Macomb County, Macomb Township, and I had to stop at one of the big box stores. And as I'm going in, I figured I'm going to show you something that I see so that you'll know too. So, let's turn this around here. All right, looks like they're getting the plant starts ready. They're loading up. There's a big old truck there. So, buyer beware. If the nights are going to be 45 or lower, you may have to cover them, okay? But you can keep them. You can come and get plants that you want to. Put them in a protected area until you're ready to plant, until you're for sure, until you're sure that the nighttime temps are going to be steady enough that uh, you're not going to have frosts or hail or heavy rains or all that kind of stuff that we've had before. They do have fruit trees out. They say the best time to plant a tree is 10 years ago and the second best time is today. So come and get fruit trees if you like fruit trees. You want to get those. There's more veggies and herbs. Oh, that's, I already showed you that already. Alright, so here's some mulch. They have various colors of mulch. Some people, they like to buy the black one. They like to buy the brown one. They like to buy the reddish orange one, terracotta one. Those are the prices. They're five bucks a bag. But here's the thing. If you're already worried about like red dye number three or whatever in your foods, you're worried about dyes, your kids are sensitive to dyes, etc. And you buy these types of mulch that have dye in them, basically you're kind of putting all that dye in the ground. And then it goes through the soil and into the water system, into the aquifers. And then, uh, I don't know if it gets treat treated to get rid of the dyes, but anyway, just be aware. You get whatever you want to. You do you. Um, I don't like the colored mulch, but you do you. I like the plain natural mulches, um, but they don't have those at this store that I can see. All right, so let's look over here real quick. I got a goat, man. I'm between horses and my regular job that makes it fine for me to garden and stuff. Um, all right, humus and man manure. This is not necessarily compost. What they say it's for is for lawn and gardening conditioning. It adds organic matter to existing soil. Um, and it's from Scott's. And I've never used it before. Because I've always thought it's more of like a lawn product. Probably would not. But there's your price if you want it. All purpose garden soil. These are the bags you gotta check for. Make sure that they say in ground gardens if you're gonna use this in ground. And what you do is you mix this with your in-ground soil if you can. Okay, you're mixing it in with this particular soil. Here's topsoil. I do use um, topsoil, uh, compost and manure, and so it's a bag of topsoil, bag of compost and manure, about half a bag of builder sand in my raised beds. Plain old topsoil, which you don't have to buy Scott's, but you could buy Scott's if you wanted to. And then here we go, here's raised bed soil. And it says here, it's convenient because there's no mixing. Da -da -da, no mixing. Now, thing is, these are $8 a bag, two for 16, $8 a bag, and it feeds with the organic nutrients. Um, the thing is, you see this bed right here? So usually it's like a six foot, or six inch, a six inch, six inch. And there's four layers here. So this is two foot tall bed, okay? If you fill the entire thing with this kind of soil, it's kind of costly. Now, if you can get a dump truck of ready blended soil to you, it might be less expensive than this. But even better is if you can fill at least half of the bed, like fill the bottom layer with rotted logs and stumps and twigs and leaves and things like that, and then grass and straw and... Um, down on the next level kitchen scraps and things like that if you can do that that bottom foot of soil as not soil but as other things that are going to trap water that would be better and then you're going to use the next layer that next foot with this kind of soil or the uh, stuff that I've mentioned before where I mix it with the top soil and the uh, uh, composted manure and uh, builder sand so 
try to save yourself a little bit of money by filling the bottom of your raised beds with the other products, the other things, stumps, logs, twigs, grass clippings, uh, shredded cardboard or newspaper, things like that in the bottoms. And then save these good soils for the top. You're gonna save yourself money and time and you're not gonna be hauling the plastic all around the place too. Um, and there was something else I wanted to say. And even then, after you put this in, after you put this in on top of other stuff, water it because the soil level is gonna go down. And you need to know how far down, I don't know if you can see this, it's in the shadow. The soil level will go down after you water it. So you may have to add a little bit more, okay? So this is from miracle Grow, and it says no mixing. So that should be a bonus if you're just trying to start out. But understand, you don't have to spend a fortune uh, for the raised beds. Oh, and I forgot the biggest benefit. By putting the natural stuff way down here at the bottom, the water, the rain, and the water that you put in there goes down in the soil and the logs and twigs and things like that, they soak up water. So when you do this, this bottom layer has lots and lots of water, which means the roots for these plants, which they're gonna grow downward in search of water versus outward. And that means you can put, the, you can put a lot more plants in these beds because the roots aren't spreading this way and competing for water, they're gonna go downward in search of water. It also means you don't have to water as often. It also means if there's a drought, your plants are probably gonna be fine because their roots will be going down and looking for that water, okay? So that's the other benefit. Versus if you had just soil for the whole thing, the water's gonna go down. It's in this kind of soil is made to drain well. That's what I do with the, um, the builder sand. Um, it's made to drain well. So the water will run down and run down and run down all the way to the ground. But nothing will be holding it in the bed. All right, that's that one. Okay, potting mix. This is for containers. You don't necessarily want to put this in a bed. It says, they always say, feeds up to six months. So this means if you use it this year, this growing season, like May till November, there's your six months. So it means that any soil that you've had in the pots is not going to have the fertilizer the next year. So you could mix the old soil in your old pots at the end of the year, that's no fertilizer, there's no more fertilizer, with some new stuff and not have to spend as much money the next year. But if you've ever used this the one year and then you try to use the same pots the next year without refreshing the soil and you're like why are the pots not doing as well as last year that's be that's why the fertilizer is gone it lasts for six months and if you leave these outside and they get wet a lot these bags then the fertilizer can like leach right out of the soil so keep them in a covered place or put a tarp over them here's smaller ones um, when it's, and when it says moisture control, ugh, I just, I'm not in favor of that. It says protects against over or under watering. Not in love with that. I would just prefer plain potting soil. Um, and just monitor the, monitor the conditions with your finger. Do the finger test. And then here's all purpose potting and planting mix. It says great for potted flowers and vegetables. Grow confidently. Feeds for six months. Again, that's your clue. It's only gonna last you one season, this, this soil, but you can refresh it. Excellent for all containers. Do not use this in your raised beds though. This, they show raised beds here. I'm not in love with that. I'd have to flip it over, which I'm not gonna do right now, to see what's actually in it, but I'm not in love with it. And that's the price on that one. Here's your potting mix. Again, this is gonna be like for your seed starts and your containers. The other one is, is gonna be also you could use that one for the seed starts too. Seed starts, containers, um, transplants, things like that. When you're moving around the garden, they got them on sale, two twenty-six, eight ninety-nine. And here's the all-purpose garden soil. Again, this is for in-ground. Improves existing soil to build strong roots. When in doubt, read the package on the front and flip it over and read the back of the package to make sure 
that you're that's what you're looking for you see this one only feeds for three months which for Michigan that could be May June July but then what happens in August and September so by that time you might have um, added like compost to your soil or you might have added uh, mulch to the top of it or there might be rainwater that's got a little bit of nitrogen but keep in mind this one's for three months the other ones down there were for six months so just to keep in mind and that's about all I got I got kayaks I got cool chairs I got tomato cages if you're growing indeterminate tomatoes the kind that vine don't use these use trellises use staking use tying but these are going to be a nightmare when you have indeterminate tomatoes because they're going to want to grow way 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 tall way tall now if you're using determinate tomatoes that only grow to about this high these are perfect because you can get to all the fruit they don't overrun them and things like that but keep that in mind indeterminate versus determinate there's wheelbarrows your best friend is a wheelbarrow or a wagon and they got annuals out all right that's all i got bye